Good afternoon, นะครับ everyone. So um, today we begin with the presentation of um, case study number two, นะครับ um, And then we follow by case study number three, and then we follow by the open case of um, module number four, นะครับ So for module number four, open case. Okay, on the last class, we just like um, I assigned like um, four to w o students already. นะครับ So um, please um, present after um, the module number three presentation finish. นะครับ And then the presentation order of um, each module. นะครับ um, Case study is in your line. Um, in, is in our line group already. นะครับ Please have a look. So. Um, we we'll begin with the first case study, นะครับ That is case study of module number two that every team submitted to um, Canvas already, นะครับ It's um, about freemium and that takes Pandora public, นะครับ Okay. So um, this case study we begin with um, James team first, นะครับ Followed by w i t c h a p a t นะครับ t a n a w i n r a c h a n o n as the fourth one, g o r a m a t h as the fifth one, Monton as the sixth one, and Chutimon's team as the seventh one. ครับ So let me stop my sharing and then I pass the stage to James' team. ครับ For um case study number two. นะครับ Okay. So please share your screen and then you may start your presentation. ครับ Thank you. Hello, oh, do can you hear me? Yes, very clearly. And can you see the screen, Cap? Yeah. Okay, so for case two, freemium takes Pandora public. So the summary is Pandora launched in 2005 for the challenge of trying to create a business out of streaming music, and this is in stark contrast to their other competitors at the time who allow users to listen to music without any subscriptions or any sort of payment. And so in 2016, after A couple of years of Pandora being in the industry, they have gained over 250 million registered users, making it one of the most successful internet radio services around. And this is due to Pandora using a freemium strategy, which is based on giving away some products or services while for free, while relying on a certain percentage of customers to pay for premium features. And this allows the service to reach a larger audience due to the free, uh, freemium features. Pandora's first strategy was to give away 10 hours of free access, and then ask subscribers to pay $36 a month for a year after they used up the free 10 hours. Uh, for this, people refused to pay the annual service due to the high pricing. And in November 2005, Pandora introduced a new feature or a new uh, strategy called Ad Support Option. Subscribers could listen to up to 40 hours of music in a month for free, and after the 40 hours were up, they had three options, which was to either pay 90 Nine cents for the rest of the month. Sign up for a premium service offering unlimited usage, or either do nothing and the music would stop completely. And so, by 2009, this free ad support model had attracted 20 million users. And in late 2009, Pandora One was launched, which is a pre, which is a premium, $36 a year service that offers no ads, higher quality streaming music, and a desktop app with fewer limit, fewer usage limits. <clears throat> This was more successful compared to their last attempt, and recently, slow growth in competitors like Spotify and Apple Music created a loss of profit for Pandora. However, Pandora has continued growth in advertising revenue. In 2015, Pandora made multiple acquisitions, such as Radio or Audio, to compete with competitors. Additionally, music licensing costs were expected to increase in 2016, but a 2015 ruling by the U.S. Copyright Royalty Board. Raise the risk to stream the songs by a smaller amount than expected. After the ruling, Pandora made deals with the two largest music licensing companies in the United States, and continued to make deals with music labels in 2016. For the freemium strategy, there's an ongoing debate about its effectiveness. The issue is that while freemium features can be an efficient way to gather a large group of potential customers, companies have found that's a challenge to convince customers to purchase and to stay with the service. Also. Uh, music, the music industry leadership is also unsure about the future of freemium music streaming. 
The heads of Universal Music Group and Sony Music both expressed skepticism of long-term prospects of the freemium model, and with many high-profile artists protesting against the freemium model as well. Another example of a successful business using a freemium model is MailChimp. Initially, after 10 years in business, the company had only 85,000 paid subscribers. In 2009, MailChimp began giving away its basic tools and charging subscription fees for special features. In just over a year, MailChimp had up to 450,000 users. The number of paying customers increased by more than 150%, while profit increased more than 650%. However, a, in stark contrast, Barometrics, another company, did not achieve the same success with the freemium model. Barometrics introduced a free option in 2015 for the full versions of each of the features in the free plan. Customers would have to upgrade. However, Barometrics did not have the resources necessary to maintain the number of users, and eventually the total number of Barometric customers dropped drastically. Barometrics has since switched to a 14-day free trial, after which customers are forced to pick a paid subscription plan. And so to analyze the freemium plan should be used only when the product is easy to use and has a very large potential audience, a solid customer value proposition, the value of a product is increased, good long-term customer retention rates, and the product produces more value over time, value, variable cost of providing the product or service to additional customers for free must be low, and very low marginal cost to support free users. Well, freemium is a good strategy for gaining a user base, the challenge is getting the customers to stay. So on to the questions. For question one, comparing the Pandera's original business model with its current business model, freemium is a business model that strategizes the use of giving away a certain degree of products or services to customers for free while relying on a certain percentage of customers to pay for the premium version. And unlike, a entirely, unlike it's entirely being free in the free model, that relies heavily on ad placements and subscription services. The freemium strategy is said to be lucrative since marginal cost of digital products is typically close to zero, so free products does not cost that much. This also enables you to reach a wider audience and thus even getting just 1% of the market to purchase your product could be very profitable. For the second question, what is the customer value proposition of Pandora? Is that the customer value proposition for Pandora offers a 30-day free trial that provides the same service to that of the paid program for free. This helps to give a large user a network increase the perceived value of the product. This is especially helpful if the company has good long-term customer retention rates and the product produces more value over time. The goal of this strategy is that the additional features or products given to customers for free must also be low for it to work as a business model. A third question, why did MailChimp ultimately succeed? Unlike MailChimp, Barometrics was not prepared to handle the influx of new users that the, premium, that the freemium model brings. With more users opting to use the free version for their service, revenue was at a loss and Barometrics did not have the available resources to continue supporting the growth of the user base. Staff and support was lacking and customers would unsubscribe to the service due to their frustrations. And finally, the last question, what's the most important consideration for considering a freemium model is that to consider a freemium model, the company must consider the ease of use of their product or service and the potential number of consumers within the market a strong value proposition for the customer. If the value is higher then the customer is more likely to use the product, the ability for the product to service a product or service to increase in value over time with new features. And the cost of providing said service must be low in order to account for the customers who are using the free version of the product. This is to ensure that the profits are not a loss. And finally, the variable cost of providing a free service to additional customers must be low. So that is our uh, case study for number two. Okay, thank you. Hap. So now let's move on to the second team. Hap, the second team. Um, which Pat's team? Hap?
So case study two is about Pandora. Um, Pandora is the internet most popular radio service. As of June, 2016, it had over 250 million registered users and 80 million active listeners. In 2015, it streamed over 21 billion hours of music. It accounts for 10% of the US radio listening, both on um, traditional and, and the internet. Moreover, it has a database of over 1 million analyzed songs from over 200,000 artists. A team of 25 professional music musicians listen, listen to new songs each day to classify them according to 450 music criteria. Um, these criteria are used in computer algorithm to classify new songs into um, various genres. It was founded in 2005 at a time when many online radio stations were making music available for free. The idea of a personal radio station playing your kind of music was very new. Um, online music illegally downloaded from a peer-to-peer -peer networks for free was also a significant factor. Uh, Pandora's business strategy is based on giving away some products for free or charging for others. Other notable freemium service stories, including um, LinkedIn and Dropbox. The marginal cost of digital products is typically close to zero. Providing a free product doesn't cost much. Its first strategy was to give away 10 hours of free access and then ask users to pay um, $36 a month for a year after they used up all their free um, quota. 100,000 people listened to their 10 hours of music for free and then just um, refused to pay for an annual subscription. Subscribers could listen to a maximum of 40 hours of music in a calendar month for free. In 2006, Pandora added a buy button to each song being played and struck a deal with um, Amazon and other retailers. In 2009, the company launched a premium version of its service that offered no advertising. By 2016, Pandora had a project debt of 1.42 billion in revenue with about 80% of that coming from advertising and the rest is from subscriptions. However, no profit has been shown for Pandora and its stock price steadily dropped um, since their high in 2014. The company faced new competitors such as Apple Music as well as Tidal, which became a threat to Pandora. Even though the company is likely to show growth in advertising or new hours, then Pandora and on-demand music service, making it direct competitor with Spotify. However, bad news came in 2016 when music uh, licensing costs were expected to increase strongly. This threatened Pandora's ability to license its music. Surprisingly, in 2015, ruling by the US, the copyright royalty brought Rising less to stream a song one time by a, by only a small amount, which benefit a premium strategy. It had clearly worked for growing companies like Pandora, LinkedIn, and Dropbox. However, there is ongoing debate about effectiveness of it since it's very challenging to convert free users to paid. So many firms are forced and 
uh, are for us to rely on advertising models such as Apple by the choice that Apple made. Their revenues for iTunes Music so have declined steeply for several years with benefits uh, its competitors such as Hedera and Spotify. However, in 2014, Apple then came up with a plan to acquire Beats, a streaming music service and, make, and maker of popular headphones then launched its own paid subscribe, uh, subscription streaming service app model after Beats called Apple Music by offering a free trial for three months. Charity is quickly made Apple, Companies, Pandora, and Spotify again. They acquired more than uh, 15 million paying users and keep rapidly going. This makes the future of premium music streaming to be unsure. Furthermore, <coughs> many famous artists are upset with the freemium model. For instance, Taylor Swift removed her entire catalog of music from Spotify to protest the premium model, claiming that it devalued her music. However, industry analysts believe that this won't affect Pandora and The subscribers continue to increase. So the question of what to turn on premium. For a company where the value to its potential customers relies on a huge network as well as when a business can be supported by the percentage of customers when so uh, let's look at the case study question for the case study uh, for the question one compare Pandora's original business models with its current business model what is the difference between free and premium revenue models Originally, Pandora came up with a free revenue model by offering users 10 free hours to listen to their music. After those 10 hours expired, Pandora would ask their customers to pay around uh, 36 uh, a month in order to keep on using their services. However, this strategy has failed. As no customer wanted to pay for this service and leaving Pandora to face financial collapse, so they introduced a new revenue model, which they have been using until today, the freemium model. It allows everyone to use their services for free, but with some limitations and relies on a certain number of customers who pay for the premium versions. Since the marginal cost of digital products is typically close to zero, which doesn't hurt the company that much, and potentially enables them to attract more customers as well. Question number two, what is the customer value proposition uh, that Panera offers? Customer value proposition that Panera offers is to give the customers access to many kinds of music through them and the ability to make or create personal sessions of music then and as they wish without any without needing to pay by the help of computer algorithms moral our music has been deployed on their services evaluated and classified by professional musicians according to the case a team of approximately uh, 25 professional musicians listens and classify a new song daily also, customer can apply with our ratings to promote and or demote certain brands, so they will likely appear on the Paris. Uh, so for question number three, uh, why did Mailchimp ultimately succeed with a freemium model, but Barometrics did not? So according to the test case, uh, the case study, it claims that freemium strategy worked best when there, are, there is a large base of audience for your services and the marginal cost is very low to support free users. Therefore, a company like MailChimp 
and email sending platform, the margin marginal cost is very low compared to uh, so they have the ability to serve millions of users. On the other hand, uh, Barometrics is a developer of analytic compatible with the Stripe payment platform. The size of it, its company is smaller compared to MailChimp. However, the demand of the company has increased when they switch to freemium plan, but eventually it wasn't able to keep up with the increase in the data processing requirements and the staff they had available for customer support were struggling to make, meet the high demand, making the experience of their service become worse so they had to switch to a 14-day tr free trial plan. For the fourth question, uh, what is the most important consideration when considering a freemium revenue model? There are many things to be considered about freemium revenue model, which in this case, we break down into three things. The most important thing would be the large potential audience. Since freemium revenue relies heavily on lots of audience in order to succeed. Thus, the more audience you have, the chance of client based turns to paid client would increase as well. Ne next thing we should consider is low marginal cost. So if more and more users come in, they will know or will be very low extra cost for the company to compensate these people. The last thing would be the scalability and it easy to use. These things would affect the customer experience if our service are hard to use and the availability of the service doesn't meet the expectation of the customer. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Nakab. So now let's move on the third um, to the third presenter, Hapana Wins team. Yes. So Pandora is the internet's most successful radio service with over 20, no, 250 million registered users and 80 million active listeners. It streamed over 21 billion hours of music in 2015. It allows users to create their own radio station based on a favorite musician and a team of 25 professional musicians listen to a new song each day and classify them into various genres. Pandora allows users to create their own, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, Pandora's founders faced many challenges when launching a new kind of online radio station, including competing with free music services as well as with iTunes. And Pandora's business strategy is referred to as freemium. Uh, freemium is a business model in which some products or services are given away for free and, and a certain percentage of customer pay for premium versions of the same product or service. And uh, Pandora's first strategy was to give away 10 hours of free access, but 100,000 people refused to pay for the annual service at the beginning. Uh, Pandora and uh, facing in financial collapse, Pandora introduced an ad-supported option which attracted 20 million users in a few weeks and allowed it to pay for its infrastructure. Uh, it now gets an affiliate fee from Amazon for directing listeners to Amazon to buy the music. Pandora turned to its premium service after attracting a large user base and launched Pandora 1 in late 2009. It met with much more success and went public in 2011. Pandora has not shown a profit and its stock price has steadily dropped since its high in 2014. However, the company has made a flurry of acquisitions in 2015, including on-demand music service radio and has made deals with music labels in 2016 to launch its on-demand service. 
Freemium has worked for companies like Pandora, LinkedIn, and Dropbox, but many companies have found it difficult to convert eyeballs into customer into paying customers. App has led a recent push against freemium competitors, Pandora and Spotify. And in 2015, Apple launched its own paid subscription streaming service app, model after Beats and has since gained 15 million paying users. Music industry leadership is unsure about the long-term prospects of premium music streaming, but industry analysts believe that Pandora and Spotify are headed toward profitability as their subscribers' numbers continue to expand. In 2009, MailChimp gave away its basic tools and started charging for special features Within the year, it had 450,000 users and increased revenue by more than 150%. Barometrics introduced a free plan in 2015 that included limited feature, but 11% of free plan subscribers eventually become paying customers. However, they were unable to keep up with the sudden increase in data processing requirements and frustrated customer cancel their subscription. So freemium makes sense when the product is easy to use and has a large potential audience, but the company must also have a solid customer value proposition and low variable cost to offer the product for free. A freemium strategy makes sense for companies with a low marginal cost of free users and a large network like Pandora, and when there are other revenues like advertising fees that can make up for shortfalls in subscriber revenues. So for case study questions, question was compare Pandora's original business model with its current business model. What's the difference between free and premium revenue model? So the answer is the original free model was relying on advertising, while right? premium allows you customer to use products or services for free and relies on a certain percentage of customers to pay for premium versions of the same product or service. Second question, what is the customer value proposition that Pandora offers? So first is the accessibility. Uh, users can listen to any song they want anytime and anywhere as long as there is internet and the and then we have the customization, which users can create their own radio station based on their favorite musicians. And lastly, it's the pricing uh, of premium. Users can use the service for free, but if they want more access to premium features, they have to pay. And third question, why did MailChimp uh, ultimately succeed with a freemium model, but parametrics did not? It's because parametric results were too large. They could not keep up with the sudden increase in data process requirements and customer support. Why MailChimp's marginal costs were small enough to launch their service for millions of users. Last question, what's the most important consideration when considering a premium revenue model? I think it's the, the marginal cost and the variable cost of providing the service or product to additional use so much for free, it must be low. Thank you. All right, thank you Naka, for your presentation. Yeah. Now let's move on to the fourth team, Naka, Ratanons and um, your team. Naka. Can you hear me? Naka? Yes, Naka, very clearly. Okay. Just give me a second, please. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so first one is uh, premium takes Pandora public. Since Pandora is the most successful radio service, um, surveys um, show that they're the leader in the services with 25% of people reporting that they had listened to it in the previous week with the Spotify distance at 10%. And Pandora has a database of over 1 million analyzed songs, 
from 200,000 different artists. This Pandora was founded by Will Glazer and Tim Westergren in 2005, having an idea of a personal radio station, playing new music every time, unlike um, iTunes, which was in 2005 was a success, but they started charging 99 cents a song. And online music um, that were downloaded illegally from the P2P networks was also uh, taken into consideration as a significant factor. Uh, Pandora's business strategy is referred to as a freemium, which is a strategy based on providing services for free. Um, Pandora's um, would have just 1% of the market to purchase that were very that would be profitable for them. Uh, they are a standard business model for most apps with 65% of the top 100 apps in the Apple Store. And the most successful mobile gaming apps today uses the same strategy as Pandora, which is freemium. Pandora turns its attention to music streaming in 2009 when they launched the high-end version of its service, where no advertisement was involved. Um, when the company went public in 2011, they had a 1.42 billion revenue with 80% coming from advertising and other sources. While freemium has undoubtedly helped companies like uh, Pandora, LinkedIn, and Dropbox, the strategy's effectiveness is still being debated as of now. And companies have discovered that um, converting the viewers to making the viewers pay is quite difficult since uh, customers would always prefer free services. Um, many years, iTunes music store revenue have been steadily declining and Apple's initial effort at a streaming service was a big flop. Apple had um, partnered up with Beats for 3 billion which was a streaming music service and a headphone manufacturer. And uh, Apple Music had started their paid membership streaming service apps that was released in 2015. MailChimp shows how freemium can turn a company's fortunes around. After 10 years in business, the company had only 85,000 paid subscribers. The company lets anyone send emails to customers, manage subscriber lists, and track the performance of marketing campaigns. Freemium has shown to be worthwhile for MailChimp. Barometrics, a company that develops statistics for the Stripe payment platform, came to the opposite result. The corporation couldn't keep up with the significant surge in data processing demands. Customers would have to upgrade to get full versions of each of the features in the free plan. As disgruntled consumers terminated their memberships, the total number of barometric subscribers began to decline below what it had been before the launch of the free plan. Because free features can help draw a user base and are more appealing to most consumers than 30 day 30-day free trials that entail a cancellation process. Using a freemium strategy can be a very effective marketing tactic. It's crucial to have a strong consumer value proposition. Freemium businesses confront issues in selecting which items and services to provide for free versus which to, which to charge for, as well as the cost of supporting free clients. Furthermore, Attrition rates in premium businesses are difficult to anticipate because they are highly changeable. Premium can be a terrific method to attract early users and create a built-in upgrade pool, but it's difficult to predict how many, how many customers will pay and stay. A premium model makes sense for organizations like Pandora because the marginal cost of supporting free consumers is close to zero dollars. When a firm such as Pandora can be supported by a percentage of willing customers, freemium works. However, other sources of revenue such as advertising fees can compensate for subscription revenue shortfalls. Moving on to the questions. So the first question is, compare Pandora's original business model with its current model. 
what's the difference between free and mean freemium revenue models so let's start with let's start with free model it was noticeable that 10 hours of lit was a little bit too short for customers to have a taste of pandora they can't even fully explore the functions and pleasures of that pandora could bring the whole point of giving customers a free trial is that can Customers can have a taste of service, thus love it and become addicted to it. $36 per month is way too expensive for a service. Paying $36 for a service you have not fully explored would not make sense, thus making the model fail. On the other hand, giving 40 hours of service makes more sense that is, it is a better length of trial for music streaming service. The customers can fully explore all essential features and fall in love with the service. Paying only 90 cents for access for the rest of the month almost causes nothing for the customer as most people would choose to pay it since it feels insignificant and also the fee for sign up premium service is also affordable. $36 per year with only $3 per month. Second, what is the customer's value proposition that Pandora offers? As far as customer value proposition goes, Pandora offers a personal radio station that plays the music that the subscriber chooses, and it classifies a similar genre of music by different artists. And also when the customer decides if they should pay for the service that Pandora offers, they see that when they upgrade to premium service, they receive fewer usage, usage limits, no advertisements, higher quality streaming music, and a desktop app. Three. Why did MailChimp ultimately succeed with the freemium model, but Biometrics did not? MailChimp succeeded because they gave away just the basics to entice the members to subscribe. They also believed that their free client email list would grow in turn. The client that used the free version would pay for the enhanced product. On the other hand, Biometrics discovered that its resources were too light to use freemium model. Unlike MailChimp, whose marginal cost was small enough, they could not. They could launch their service for million users. Biometrics is a smaller company with different goals and scope. Fourth, what's the most important consideration when considering a freemium revenue model? The most important consideration can be the fact that freemium revenue model requires a large number of potential subscribers. This type of model would also make sense if a company has very low marginal cost. The profit maximizing business would require recognize that they have to offer more to paying customers when compared to those using the free product. It is also important to be able to support your business with only paying customers until one can obtain affiliates. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nakab. So now let's move on to the fifth group, Nakab, Boromas and your group, Kab. Uh, okay, so we did our, this is the case study on the freemium model and talk about the summary first. Uh, so this case study described Pandora, the internet radio service in June of 2016. They had 250 million registered users and 225 million for mobile devices. They boasted 80 million active listeners at that time as well. Pandora is an internet radio service that compiles a user's radio station based off of a given artist or song. This creates a unique station tailored to their listening tastes. <clears throat> Pandora has been around since 2005 uh, and they faced many struggles during this early internet bubble. They had a hard time entering the market given the kinds of competition they had at the time. Some radio stations gave music ad free on their website, iTunes only charged 99 cents per song and peer to peer torrenting was extremely popular during this time. So they needed a different approach to the market in order to stand out. This led them to create their freemium service, meaning they would provide a service for free. Freemium, the free, the freemium service they offered was the could be streamed to the user free of charge and offer more benefits for the premium users who did not pay. Uh, this made the app 
available to everyone and those with more money could buy the better features within the app. However, even though we would think of most freemium apps uh, accomplish this by implementing ads, Pandora had a different approach. They only offered 10 free hours of listening, then asked users to pay once their 10 hours was up. So it was more like a trial service than it was a free service. So in November 2005, when the company was not doing so well, Pandora implemented an ad supported option. The new ad supported service allowed users 40 hours per month of listening. And after 40 hours, they could pay 99 cents for one month by premium for unlimited usage, or the service would be suspended until the next month. This was risky for them because they, at the time they had no ad infrastructure, but it paid off after companies like Apple, Amazon, and other retail giants began approaching them. Once they gathered the money, they were able to refocus their premium service uh, in 2009. And it seems to have been good for them uh, because they were able to generate 1.42 billion in revenue in 2016, 80% which came from ads. Uh, However, given all that, they still have not shown any profit in all this time. They are experiencing a declining user rate and being outcompeted by new online radios such as Spotify, Apple Music, and other services. This has led to ongoing debate about long-term effectiveness of freemium. Apple wanted to get into the music stream market and they introduced Apple Music in 2015, has more than 15 million paying users they were able to do this by offering three month trial then asking users to pay to continue using their service. UMG, uh, the Universal Music Group and Sony Music also remain skeptical about freemium services and their long-term effect on the music industry. Some popular music was removed from Spotify with artists claiming that it was devaluing their music. On the remainder, the case study discusses freemium models and other businesses, such as MailChimp, a mass email marketing tool service. When they changed to the freemium model, their sales and profit were boosted. It also discusses bare metrics, but due to unreliable customer support, they were not able to support an increase in demand from switching. The freemium model makes sense when it's easy to use and can be used as an effective marketing tool, but it's not a band-aid solution to a company's lack of profit margins. Uh, also when the marginal cost of tech is low, like Pandora. Okay. Uh, first question. So for the first question, in Pandora's free business model, users are given 10 hours. So, okay, so the first one is comparing Pandora's original business model with its current business model and the difference between the free and freemium revenue model. So in the free business model, users are given 10 hours of free access to Pandora and they charge $36 annually. So if they want to continue using the service, despite users actually enjoying Pandora, they refuse to convert leading to the new freemium business model where their current services now support ads in order to gain consistent stream of revenue. This in turn allows Pandora to offer a longer amount of free usage time to the users of 40 hours with little inconvenience of having to listen to advertisement or being limited from accessing certain features. There are also two more payment options for customers to choose from. They could either pay 0.99 dollars $0 to extend their usage if they've exhausted their limits, or they could subscribe. So with the increased flexibility, customers feel that they have more choice to choose from rather than having to commit long-term. And since they tend not to use up the full 40 hour time limit, it encourages them to stick to the app which if they sufficiently like it, the annoyances of advertisement would encourage them to subscribe. The difference between the free and freemium model is that free models are like trials, which offers users the services full capability only for a short amount of time. Whereas for freemium, customers can continue using the service without limits, or perhaps the limit is too high to, for the user to ever use up, but with certain limitations and advertisements, and also an option to upgrade. This will attract a larger amount of customer pool, and even if a small, por a small portion of them convert to active subscribers, the revenue gain would still be significant. Moving on to the next question. Next question. So, what is the customer value proposition that Pandora offers? Pandora offers an on-demand access to a large amount of music from renowned artists that are customized to each user's listening preferences the service utilizes a computer algorithm that analyzes the user's favorite playlist 
and curates other songs that the users could potentially like radio style to them based on classification from professional musicians. So here, instead of users having to search for songs by themselves, Pandora automatically recommends it to them, taking away that inconvenience to the users. And the users also don't have to buy each of the albums separately when they're all available on the service. Next question. Uh, okay, so MailChimp was able to succeed. This was the question about MailChimp versus bare metrics. MailChimp was able to succeed with their freemium model because they had already had a well-established product and infrastructure and very little marginal cost. It did not wall any existing features behind a premium wall. And instead they all started offering basic paid features for free. This enticed plenty of new users to come to them and increase their monthly paid customers by 150%. Bare metrics, on the other hand, decided to switch to a trial strategy in which customers were able to upgrade upon completion of the trial, but they failed because they did not have the on-hand customer support to support the, the new influx of uh, users. This meant that their long-term loyal customers had to also face the difficulties with the downgrade in their customer service and most likely turn to other services who offered the same uh, product. And then the last, so what are important things to look out for when wanting to make the switch to freemium? The most important thing to look out for is does it make sense for your business? In Pandora's case, they were early adopters of the technology, technology and honestly, they probably were the exception, not the standard. It just happened to work out for them. However, with companies like MailChimp, it made sense for them to do the switch. Uh, it can help attract new customers and gives people a small taste of your product. It can help attract new customers without any expense to your existing ones. And But in the case like Barometrics, they switched and they put their existing customers at a disadvantage. And this resulted in them losing business. Uh, so don't do what Barometrics did and you'll most likely be good. And then the end of the article also says like, be wary of mass tech like Apple, Sony. Uh, they are might be a threat for your freemium product. Okay, uh, that's it for our case study two. Thank you. All right, thank you, Nakab. And then let's move on to uh, Monton's team, Kap. Okay, Kap, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so let's start with a summary. Pandora is the most popular internet radio station. Professor and team rescuing uh, Pandora product for product the company in 2005. Users select a set of music based on a premise. Musician at Pandora and a computer algorithm here's a personal radio station that includes not just the music of the selected artists, but also music by other artists who are closely related. Pandora has approximately 1 million people kept track from over 200,000 artists in its database. The Pandora business model is known as premium. A premium extension is based on giving away some products or service for of free by relying on certain percentage of customer to pay for premium versions of the same product or service. Pandora first then she was to give away 10 hours of free access and then accept subscriber to pay for $36 a month per year. After they used up their free 10 hours, Preset and Pandora fans with financial lunch. Pandora announced an at top hearted option in November 2005. In calendar month, customers could listen to a maximum up to 40 hours of the music for free. Subscribers have three options once 40 hours were up. That is a target so many users in a few weeks. Pandora adds by what time to each song being paid and start deal with Amazon in June and also online retail size. 
ินเลทโรสเซนแลนด์มาจากคอมพานีลอนเชสแอนด์ตัวว่าวันแบบไฮเอ็นเวอร์ชจนออฟติดสูดแบบชอตเวฟโนเอฟไรซิ่งฮาร์เคอร์เรตี้แอนด์สตรีมมิ่งมิวสิกแอนด์อัพเดสท็อปแอคฟอร์ฟิวเวอร์ยูเซตลิมิตทิสทามอิสวอตอัลล์มอสเซตฟูฮาวเวอร์แอนด์ดัลล่าฮัสนาเดสโชว์อัพโฟร์ฟิตแอนด์อิสสต็อกไฮท์ฮัสซาเดรีดับเซนอิสไฮอินโรสตันแอนด์โปรตีนฮันดาบาไดรี่คอมพิวเตอร์ดิสปอร์ติฟายอินออนดิมานมิวสิกสตรีมมิ่งเอสอัพเดสไซส์ทูโฟกัสซิ่งพาร์เมลีออนอิสเตอร์เดียลโมเดลยูซิ่งอัฟฟิเนียมสตันจิคันดิลิเฮรีพัฟเฟตฟูฟิเนียมมิวสิกสตรีมมิ่งเซอร์วิสดัสนอทฮัตชัวร์รี่อับาร์ดาพิสเนสโมเดลคลีนซาวบัตเดดูฮัตชัวร์รี่อับาร์ดอินดัสทรีเดฮัมันไลท์โฟแอนด์เลคอร์ดเดดูสแตนดิ้งอัพสตูเดนต์ Uh, moving on to the question part. First question: Compare Pandora's original business model with its current business model. What's the difference between fee and premium revenue model? At first, Pandora g i v e out free 10 h o u r fee to their customer to listen to music, and once it's complete, the customer will be asked to subscribe for a monthly fee of $36 to be able to. Continue to use the service. However, lots of customer uh, refuse to pay and subscribe for this service. This is why Pandora came up with a different business model, which is called a uh, premium model. This time, Pandora offer a 40 h o u r free access with an as support option to the customer, and once it's all used up, they will be given two choice: one, pay 99 cents for the rest of the month, two. They can subscribe to the premium service, which allows for unlimited access. Or three, do nothing, which will stop their music, but they will still subscribe in the next month. To compare both of these models, in short, is like in free model. They give out time for customers to try out their product and hope of getting the person to subscribe to the service. First, in premium model, they give out basic service for free, but then give out some choice and offer premium service for Monday. Subscription. Moving on to the second question, what is the customer value proposition that p a n o r a offer? p a n o r a offer a personal radio station that play music that has been chosen by their subscriber and when customers pay for the service, they can clearly see that they receive fewer u s a g limit and no more advertisement with better quality music and other top app. For this, m a i l c h i m ultimately succeed with a premium model, but Barometric did not. The reason m a i l c h i m p succeed with the premium model is because of the basic feature that they gave out. The free basic feature is enough for them to capture a large user base. With all these people who use the free service, it helped m a i l c h i m p to step up another step and attract more potential subscribers. m a i l c h i m p is a mailing service that allows their users to send email to their subscribers. With people who find a way to make money out of it. And when they are able to find money from the service, once the free version is over, they will surely pay for the premium version. Whereas the for the m e t r i c they fail with the premium model because they did not have as much of a user base as the team did. Also, the usage of the premium service increases due to the premium model. The m e t r i c wasn't able to keep up with the sudden increase in the data processing requirement and the staff for customer support to meet the demand. Of the customer, which leads to a drop in subscriber. The fourth question: What is the most important consideration when considering a premium revenue model? The premium business model. You work most uh, effectively when there is a large and strong user base, where the company continuously works to get more subscribers to pay for their premium service. So the most important thing for this model is a large number of potential subscribers. This is because when the customers start using the service and they experience it themselves, that this service is useful to them, they will continue to subscribe, and most of the time they will start talking about it with other people, such as their coworker or their friend. This way, they are already helping the company to promote the service itself without even realizing it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, นะครับ Now let's move on to the last team, ครับ
Can you see my screen, ha? Huh? Yes, ka, very clearly. In the first task, I will summarize the case study freemium text Pandora Public. Firstly, I would like to give you some information about Pandora, which is the internet successful sub subscription service. As of June 2016, it had over 250 million registered users, and Pandora now accounts for over 70% of all internet radio listening hours, and it is mostly free with connectivity available everywhere. A team of professional musicians listen to the new song and classify the music according to more than 450 musical criteria. Pandora was launched in 2005 by Will Gesser and Tim Westergren. Their first business was to give away 10 hours of free access and ask subscribers to pay $36 a month for a year. After that free 10 hours, therefore, 100,000 people listened to their free 10 hours but refused to pay for the annual service. After that, they were facing a financial crisis and they found a way to solve the problem by offering 40 hours for free with three optionals. Next, let's move on to the questions. The first question is compare Pandora's original business model with its current business model. And what's the difference between free and premium revenue models? And the answer is that at the beginning, Pandora tried to get some customer by offering them um, 10 free hours and few incentives to upgrade to premium. The, the service was free but limited in access. And in the current model, it provides much greater offers, which are 40 hours and use as support option to pay for servicing the non-payer. And this is also free, but Panola was not giving away enough free service in the first model to convince people to pay. And freemium revenue models offer customer a superior service in return for paying subscriptions fees why free revenue models are typically based on advertising support. The second question, what is the customer value propositions that Panola offers? Actually, user can create multiple personal radio stations that play music, musical genres. They like without paying the subscription and this service introduce user to musicians who are similar to the artists users enjoy. And the third question is, why did MailChimp ultimately succeed with a freemium model, but Biometric did not? Biometric failed since the cost of providing the infrastructure for free users far exceeded its revenue, and the cost of adding additional users was not zero or close to it. However, MailChimp could scale much more easier without adding a lot of capacity and infrastructure, given the simplicity of its service when compared to social working. And the last, last question is, what's the, important, what's the most important consideration when considering a freemium revenue model? The most important consideration is that the marginal cost of service, servicing an additional user must be close to zero and take it into account. Include that auto revenue streams such advertising will be needed to cover costs and a solid customer value proposition is required to attract initial user even uh, when the service is offered for free. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nahab. And then um, every team finished presentation on your um, case study number two already, Nahab. Now let's move on to the next case study, Nahab. That is case study um, of um, chapter number three, Nahab. We will begin with Goramat, Nahab, and um, his team, Nahab, which are parts, Nahab, um, Shutimon, Nahab, as a third presenter. Um, James and the team as a fourth one, 
Ratanon and your team is the fifth one. Tanawin is the sixth um, group of presentation. And the last team goes to Montone Superkit Cup. Okay, so please um, start the half Paramat team. Ha. Uh, hello, good uh, afternoon. So I would like to, oh, can you hear me, Ajahn? Um, excuse me, Justino. Um, it's not quite clear how your voice. It's just like um, very soft. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, better, a lot better, thank you. Okay, so this is for case study number three, uh, which tells us about Akamai. So I'm gonna be doing, so I'm gonna be telling the summary right now. So uh, we need to begin with the internet first because the internet is a collection of networks that uh, passes information from one network to another uh, because of the amount of information that each packet must pass, slow distribution of content happens as it also as it also uh, may go through many different servers before the packet reach its final destination. The internet as of now spends too much time and capacity for verifying packets contributing to a problem called latency. Uh, with the increase in today's broadband environment and customer expectations of it, Akamai comes into place. So Akamai Technologies was founded by Tom Layton and Daniel Lewin with the idea of expediting internet traffic to overcome the limitations of it. It launched on August 1998, where their current products are currently based on the Akamai Intelligent Platform, which is a cloud platform that allows the platform they are working on to identify and block security threats and provide comprehensive knowledge of network conditions, as well as instant device level detection and optimization. Because of their high delivery in web traffic, Akamai has to monitor the entire internet, locating potential sluggish areas and devising faster routes for information to travel. The shift toward cloud computing and the mobile platform as well, uh, growth in popularity of streaming video have provided Akamai with new growth opportunities as more business models, as small businesses and business models are moving to the web. Akamai has seen its client base continue to grow beyond the most powerful internet retailers and online content providers. However, the growth on streaming video has also created new challenges, such as increase in competition uh, from Comcast and Amazon, for example, uh, which have been uh, which have been built competing content delivery services. Akamai is also acutely aware of the increase in cybercrime as more as traffic uh, migrates to the internet. Even if the growth in traffic is good news for Akamai, the company must also now deal with politically motivated cyber attacks, online crimes, and cyber warfare. Akamai has continued to improve its uh, defender tool, uh, which is Conasec Defender Tool, that offers a variety of security measures for Akamai clients. Uh, this tool protects against uh, DDoS attacks uh, that includes a firewall for web applications. Uh, with so many businesses now dependent on uninterrupted flow of content over the internet, Akamai is in a very strong position to sell security services to its customers. Akamai announced it would restructure its business into focusing on content delivery media as well as website security. While the future of its content delivery business is cloudier due to the increase of competitions and challenges of the internet, the company is still very profitable. Uh, next slide, please. So, moving on to the first question. Why does Akamai need to geographically disperse its servers to, del to deliver its customer web content? Well, Akamai needs to disperse its server in order to reduce the latency of the customer's requests. Their servers are within one hop range of up to 85% of all internet users. So packets now have to travel between multiple servers before reaching their final destination and back. This reduces the overall internet traffic, allowing the users to receive faster content. The large amount of their infrastructure dispersal also mitigates the risk that if something happened to one of their location, that another server could take over. Question two. If you wanted to deliver software content for the internet, you sign up for Akamai's service, why or why not? I would consider signing up for Akamai if the website has a large enough number of users that are accessing it simultaneously at any given moment, and that the website is an integral part of the core service offerings of the company, given that the company is off operating on a large scale. There was a report that just a hundred millisecond decrease in latency could potentially result up to a 1% increase in revenue for e-commerce websites. Moreover, Akamai would 
provide a secure intermediary that would help prevent DDoS attacks since their digital infrastructure is too large to be taken down without the company having to set up their own infrastructure. Having a high performing, performing website also factor, it, factor into optimizing the SEO ranking in Google search, where the lower time it takes for the content from the website to be delivered, the better Google will rank your page. However, for instance, if the company is in the small to medium range and the website is not content heavy, such as only there to display information and contact details, then the use of Akamai would not be justifiable. Akamai services are quite expensive and they usually cater to large enterprises with a need for high amount of customizability. Google Cloud CDN, Amazon Cloud Front, or Cloudflare offers a more accessible level of service for general types of businesses. Uh, now for the last question, do you think internet users should be charged based on the amount of bandwidth they consume or on a tier plan where users would pay in rough proportion to their usage? Uh, personally, I believe that it, they should be charged by using a tier system in proportion to their usage. Because if the consumers were charged by the amount of bandwidth they use, it will be bad on the consumer side as they will have to pay more and more as their consumption rate increase. Uh, because people don't tend to realize how much bandwidth they're consuming when they're using the internet. Uh, people would then experience latency, which is worse than having no internet quota. Rather than making it a hassle, a tier system based on their consumption rate would be better as consumers would know what tier to subscribe based on their internet consumption rate then they get, what, uh, they get a stable connection with minimal latency. If the tier has finished or expired, they can just subscribe to that tier again. Uh, that's it for uh, our presentation. Thank you for listening. Okay, okay thank, thank you. Thank you. So let's move on to the second team, which are Pat and your team. Okay, no problem with Japan. Hello, can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, this is can my- Can you make screen. a bit um, bigger, please? But I don't know how to zoom it in. <laughs> okay, okay, no problem. Then you can explain then. Sorry for that. Uh, this is my case study number three, Akamai case study summary. People in today's broad brand, sorry, environment have a poor tolerance for wedding because, because of the exponential development in internet trafficking around the world. They want high quality material. People is expected, is expectation for web delivery services may not be met. This is where Akamai comes in to help. Akamai allow business to deliver their contents more quickly, more than uh, uh, 30 terabyte, terabytes of online traffic are served is taken by Akamai. Because the internet spends so much time certifying packets, delay issue arise. Another issue that is content may have to pass through several servers before arriving at the destination Akamai service provides a better way to transport these packets to the user's endpoint by storing copies of content in various locations around the internet, which the user can access when making a request. Akamai's current solutions are built on Akamai's intelligent platform, a cloud platform that connects over uh, 216,000 servers in 
120 countries to over 1.5 thousand networks around the world are within a single network half of 85% of our internet users. On the servers, Akamai software allows the platform to detect and block security risk, as well as give a deep network knowledge and immediate device level detection and optimization. Customer can use Akamai size to perform uh, to uh, Akamai size performance produce to get their online content closer to end user. As a result, Agamai server can be found in tier one backbone supply internet networks, Lux, ISPs, college, and other network. The software at Agamai evaluates which server is best for user and then sends the Agamai content locally. Agamai's website can provide content for to 10 times rather than not Agamai website. Akamai's has also produced a number of other business services based on its, its an internet expertise, such as targeted advertising based on user location and zip code, content security, business intelligence, uh, disaster recovery, on-demand batteries, and computing capacity during internet traffic spice, storage, global traffic management, and streaming services. However, as a stream, as a, however, as a streaming has grown in popularity, Agamai has faced with new issues, including increased competition from corporations like uh, Comcast and Amazon, as well as companies like Facebook and Apple, shifting their trafficking activity away from Agamai. As demand grows, Agamai is faced with increased carbon emission and energy expenditure. Another issue that has come as a result of increase in internet traffic is that Agamai now has to deal with more politically motivated cyber attacks, online organized crime, and state sponsored cyber warfare, warfare with the state. Agamai has continued to enhance and provide customers with new and uh, Uh, Akamai tried to improve and upgrade capabilities such as its firewalls and site defenders, as well as making the product easier to use. Uh, Akamai has also continued to grow as a company by partnering with other companies who provide each other services, such as a cloud service agreement with China Unicorn in fast-growing Chinese market and the opening of an office in Dubai to bolster uh, its presence in an area where broadband adoption is skyrocketing. In 2016, uh, Akamai saw a rise in sales for the security solutions. So they split their infrastructure into two parts, one for content delivery and media, and another for website security. As a result, any slowdown in Akamai's content delivery business has been countered by a advance in security operations. Akamai's future plans include developing security technologies to safeguard employees against phishing and malware, while the future of its content delivery business is less certain due to increased competition and the limitation of internet expansion, the company remain profitable. Uh, for the case study question, uh, why does Akamai need to geographically disperse its servers to deliver its customer web content? The purpose of Akamai to geographically disperse its server is to deliver its customer web content so that the local server will be the one to handle the request from the local user and quickly respond back. This shortens the time needed for users to receive their content compared to when one main server is set up and the position of the users is far from the service. 
since the content would have to travel through many servers before reaching the destination, which consumes more time compared to disperse, dispersing it uh, geographically. On to the second question. If you wanted to deliver software content over the internet, would you sign up for Akamai service? Why or why not? Um, assuming our product is used in many countries and the scale of the user base is high, I would use Akamai service to help create a better um, overall user experience since Akamai service helps um, to reduce the latency or the time it takes for the user to receive the response back from the server. Um, this will create a good impression overall for new users. For example, when they visit a website for the first time and a website loads up um, almost instantly. Last question, do you think internet users should be charged based on the amount of bandwidth they consume or a tier plan where user would pay in a rough proportion to their usage? At first, the idea of charging users based on the exact amount of bandwidth they consumed seems to be a fair choice. However, this means that big tech companies can pay big money um, to the internet provider and can get all the bandwidth to themselves. On the other hand, people with low, lower income will have a harder time accessing the internet due to a limited bandwidth, um, which will be very damaging to our society in this day and age where people can get education or information on the internet for free. Therefore, we should make, um, we should try to make the cost of accessing the internet as low as possible. So I think the tier plan where user would pay in rough proportion um, to their usage would be a better option in this case. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So now I have, let's move on to the third presenter. Um, it goes to Shuti Mon and the team. Have. Firstly, I would like to go to summarize the Akamai technologies helping to achieve supply head of demand. Akamai technology is one of the web major helper with an idea of expediting internet traffic. To overcome this limitation was founded by Tom Redden, an MIT professor of applied mathematics, and Daniel Levin, an MIT grad student, officially launched in August 1898. 19, sorry, it's described storing copy of of web content such as pictures or video clip at many different locations around the internet so that one could always retrieve a nearby copy, making web pages load faster. This is the idea behind each computing locating and data storage in servers at close to the location where, where they are needed to reduce latency improve response time and language, accommodate current products are based on Akamai intelligence platform, made up approximately 275,000 servers and in 136 countries, within nearly 1,500 networks around the world, and all within a single network top of 86% of all internet users. Akamai software on the server allows the platform to identify and box security treat, provide comprehensive knowledge of network condition, instant the wide level detection and optimization. Akamai site perform performance produces a customer to move their online content, Closer to end users, Akamai software determines which server in optimal with the user and then transmit the content locally website that are Akamai set can be 
deliver everywhere from four to ten times as fast as non academized content. Akamai also developed several other businesses and business models based on the internet survey, including targeted advertising based on user location and zip code, content security, business intelligence, disaster recovery, on demand bandwidth, and computing capacity during spike in internet traffic, storage, global traffic management, and stream service. For the, <clears throat> for the first question, why does Akamai need to geographically disperse its servers to deliver its customer web content? Since this is the main concept of Akamai, the dispersed web content such as videos or pictures and store it in certain places around the world. So whenever a customer requests the content, it is redirected to an Akamai server nearby and the content served from this local server, which is four to 10 times faster. This increases the speed with which websites are slow and decreases the issue with recency as people have less patience for waiting when it comes to online content. Akamai is assured that they need to be as close as they can to each customer. Next, if you wanted to deliver software content over the internet, would you sign up for it in my service? Why or why not? I would say definitely yes, because Ekamai service has reputations and credit on the market. So it means they have a huge customer base. Some of their clients include Apple and NASDAQ, an American stock exchange that has servers all are over the world. This would currently fast access from many places around the world. So it will be a smart investment. They also have experience handling risk and deep knowledge in the field thanks to a year of the market. And the last question, do you think internet users should be charged based on amount of bandwidth they consume, on the amount of bandwidth they consume or on a retail plan the user would pay in good proportion to the usage. In my opinion, internet users should be charged based on the tire plan. People and companies don't use the same amount of internet every month. Therefore, it will only be fair to pay a fixed rate. Also, consumers can decide that download speed they would like to have. For example, a house which use only 100 gigabyte a month of download we wish to pay less than a company that's stranded to buy of data. And therefore we pay for the promotion. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nakab. So now move on to the next team, James and the team Kap. One moment, Nakab. Okay, no problem. Okay, so this is the presentation uh, from our group for Akamai Technology. 
So uh, the company was founded in 1998 by a graduate and a professor from MIT. And the current products are based on the on the Akamai Intelligent Platform, uh, which is a cloud platform that can be reached by approximately 85% of all internet users around the world. And the software on this server allow, allows the platform to identify and block security threats and provide comprehensive knowledge of um, network conditions, as well as instant device level detection and optimization. So for instance, if the system detects that the user geolocation is in Bangkok, uh, the system will serve the item that the user is asking for from the closest server. So for example, maybe in, in Singapore, and in 2015, Akamai delivered between uh, 15 and 30% of all web traffic and um, over 3 trillion daily internet interactions. Now, accomplishing this task requires that Akamai monitor the entire internet and locating potential uh, areas and uh, dev devising faster routes for information to travel. Uh, frequently used portion of a client's website or a large video or audio files that would be difficult to send to users quickly are stored on the Akamai server. Uh, for example, when a user wrote a video file, uh, his or her request will be redirected to an Akamai server nearby and the content is then served from the local server. Akamai servers are placed in the tier one backbone supplier network, uh, large ISPs, universities, and other networks. Uh, Akamai software determines which server is optimal for the users and then uh, and then it will transmit the Akamai content locally. And websites that are Akamai can be de delivered anywhere from four to 10 times faster uh, than the content that are not Akamai. Akamai has developed a number of other businesses, uh, services as well, such as targeted advertising, uh, content security, business intelligence, uh, disaster discover, uh, recovery, and many more. And also in 2014, Akamai has made a push to encourage Hollywood studios to use that, uh, the cloud for feature films. Uh, they also promote its ability to handle, upload, and download of large video files and to quickly convert, convert files from one format to another and to apply DRM protections. And with an increasing amount of media consumption taking place on mobile devices through the cloud, Akamai has also made agreement to become the primary content delivery platform for cloud services provider, providers like Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform. Um, Akamai is also aware of the in, increase in cybercrime as more uh, traffic migrates to the internet. And the growth in internet traffic is good, good news for them as well, but the company must also now deal with uh, politically motivated cyber attacks, organized crime online, and state-sponsored cyber warfare. Uh, in 2016, Akamai announced that it would restructure its business into two distinct units, one on focusing content delivery and media, and the other on website security. Akamai's security businesses has offset any sort of net content delivery business. As the company registered earnings were above uh, analyst estimate in 2016, despite increased competition in content delivery from other competitors, so let's go to the first question. Why does Akamai need to geographically disperse its servers to deliver its customers' web content? And um, the reason that Akamai needs to disperse its server in locations around the world is uh, because to, uh, to minimize the distance between the visitor and the content that the visitor is requesting. Now, uh, a content delivery network or CDN like the one Akamai is offering, uh, stores a cache version of its content in multiple geographical locations. And in each location, it, uh, it contains a large number of caching servers responsible for content delivery to visitors with, within its uh, radius. And in essence, uh, the CDN puts the content of things such as websites, 
video and audio in many places at once, uh, providing superior coverage to the users. So for example, when someone in London accesses a website hosted in Bangkok, it is done through a local UK uh, CDN. And this is much quicker than having the visitor's request and the responses travel the full uh, length of the distance uh, to Thailand and back to the UK. And the second question is, if you wanted to deliver software content over the internet, uh, would you sign up for Akamai service? Why or why not? And as we stated in the first question, the purpose of a CDN is to increase the user's experiences as a whole in terms of latency. And uh, Akamai replicates information such as web pages, medias, and files, and puts the information on the user's local server so that they can access the content quicker and easier. And we would absolutely sign up for Akamai service. In hindsight, we probably have used Akamai service even without knowing it when we are downloading music or streaming content over the internet. Uh, Akamai CDN service play a crucial role in providing content from the provider to the consumer in a timely manner. And the last question is, do you think internet users should be charged based on the amount of bandwidth they consume or on a tier plan where users would pay in rough proportion to their usage. And in our opinion, internet users should not be charged based on the amount of bandwidth that they consume because not all people utilize the internet equally in terms of bandwidth. And we believe that everyone should have equal access to the internet, which means that they should be able to obtain the uh, full speed no matter what their internet usage is. We believe that the latter choice would be suitable not only for users in a certain certain country, but also to internet users around the world. That's it for our presentation, Cup. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Nahab, every team, for your presentation on the case study, module two and module three on um for four teams. On um this coming Wednesday, we are going to continue talking about like three more teams for um case study number three, and then um the open case for uh, module four and I have from from whom Justino and um, who is the other one Justino and uh, Supakit I have okay right so um, because I think that um, should be all for today otherwise um, it will drag you to just like um, be delayed after um, 2 p.m. for sure right Okay, then I have everyone. So up to this point, do you have any questions? Have 